All right, everybody, welcome back to Clicks and Bricks. My name is Ken, and this is Brian. Today, I don't have our topic yet. It is the mindset, the mindset to start a business or run a business. Oh shit. <laughs> the mindset behind starting a business? That's yes. the next topic. Yes. <laughs> okay. So maybe maybe we should tell Ken what the topic is. <laughs> like maybe even 10 minutes before the podcast. I'm stoked about today's topic. That's, that's awesome. That we're was starting, the point. <laughs> we're starting a little bit late. Um, just for those out there, if you want to join my text community, 314-370-2871. Just send me a text. Text me with just the word hi, and I'll add you to the community, and I will send you tips, tricks, motivational crap, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and that's about it for my text messaging line. Sorry. There we go. We did have lunch at Hooters today. We're a couple beers <laughs> in. Um, Only a couple. We're celebrating a couple of good wins, yes. and, and that's uh, a good thing. So um, if we're a little off kilter this today... I apologize. Um, what's up next, Brian? <laughs> All right. Well, with that, with that, let's go ahead and just dive right in today. Uh, let's dive into our Between the Cubicles. We have to do our Between the Cubicles. Um, and today, we're going to talk about cancel culture. All right. right? It's a big topic in today's world, cancel culture. It, it, it seems like it's never ending. <laughs> um, and the latest... Well, I think over the past couple of years, it started out kind of slow with the statues yes. and like the General Lee kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and some stuff that was like abundantly obvious that, that maybe um, maybe we shouldn't be preaching to them. I, th I still think they're important pieces of history, um, but- All know, history matters. Ev everybody has, everybody has their <laughs> <laughs> um, um, of, of the, that kind of topic. So, um, because like you, Brian, I know we've talked about this a bunch. Yep. And cancel culture, General Lee, is on the block, right? Yes. And, and obviously so, right? The, the Confederate flag has a lot of negative indications right. wrapped around its... I mean, they lost, they lost the war, right? I mean, had the South won, maybe we'd be having a different conversation. The United States of the Confederacy. Yeah, <laughs> but they didn't win. They lost the war. Um, but the flag still has has meaning to a lot of people, but also has a lot of negative meaning to a lot of people. Right. So, and that's why the general leaves on the chopping block. And, and I know that I had a, I, I had a Dukes of Hazard lunchbox. And, Dude, I watched the Dukes of Hazard. And I don't know a person <laughs> on the planet that thinks Daisy Dukes are bad, but, uh, <laughs> but what's your mind, what's your mindset on the, on the general Lee? Um, the only thing I disliked about the general Lee was the flag. But I loved everything else. I watched the TV show all the time. I had one of my best friends. Uh, we played hockey together. And, like, we used to make movies a lot. And we had all these little action figures and cars and yeah. stuff. We'd make all these movies with the General Lee jumping over stuff because we made it better. <laughs> um, <laughs> and his older brother actually bought a replica. Okay. And had the General Lee. So I rode in the General Lee <laughs> when I was in high school. Right. You know, so, I mean, I, I love it. Um I, I understand where some people can have their negative uh, con context about the whole thing. Um, I just didn't think that's what the show was about, and I didn't. I, I, didn't I don't that. think the show is about that either, right? And and I kind of look at the the Confederate flag kind of like I look like a hammer, right? The, a hammer has done some pretty vicious shit in its life. <laughs> right? there, there are hammers in the world that have done bad things, but it doesn't mean all hammers are bad. So not all Southerners, all rebels in the world right, are bad right. people. Um, but obviously, I mean, if you come from the, the traditional South, you know, where you um, think that slavery is a good thing and all that shit, that's bad, obviously, <laughs> right? Right. Um, but there was also some good stuff about being a rebel and, you know, damn the man and, and I'm going to charge my, my own, own path. And, <laughs> yeah. And I don't care whatever the people think. Says so every there's, business there's owner good ever. and bad with that that particular um, set of stars and stripes. <laughs> um, and, you know, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Um, I think, personally, I live in America and I like the fact that I can like something that other people don't. And... And appreciate it for reasons that aren't necessarily the negative reasons, um, and move forward with life. I mean, I, that's I, I agree with that. You know, I mean, one of the beautiful things about being in this country is that we like have the right to feel what we feel, right? Yes. And, and we and we're actually protected in that right. So I mean, 
even though like well, we like to think so. Oh. At least. <laughs> That's <laughs> another topic for another yes. day. <laughs> but but I mean like you know I, even though that it's it's not my cup of tea, if it's someone else's, I'm like okay great. Maybe it's your shot of fireball. Right. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Great. That's cool. So, but today, the reason I think that this topic boiled up to the top today was because of the Pepe Le Pew. Right. And the, what's her name? What's her first name? Last name's Dune. Kara. Kara Dune. Yeah. Right. So Kara Dune is out um, calling people modern day Nazis. <laughs> I, and, and, and quite frankly, I don't know anything about her. And I don't know about anything about what she's, I mean, what she's, what the, the speech that she's spouted. Right? That's not even her real name. That's her character name. <laughs> it's a character name on The Mandalorian, right? Yeah. Sorry. So she goes on her social media. She says some things. Disney says, hey, don't say those things. She keeps saying them. Disney Disney's says, hey, know. don't say those things again. <laughs> and she keeps saying them, and she gets fired. Uh, so she lost her job for what she's talking about online. So in a... Did they cancel the character or just her job as the character? So they're going to kill off the character. Becky her. So she's out. A new character is going to come in as that Dune, Miss Dune. So she's fired, and a new person is going to come in and play that role. Um, and then also this week we had Disney cancels Pepe Le Pew. Right. I mean, like, so I would be more okay with the Pepe Le Pew being canceled if they had another scum came in, like his cousin. <laughs> right or is so, his twin or something I just don't I, personally I don't understand canceling something that has existed um, I can understand canceling something that existed I don't in this particular case um, I, I, I think it's just um, I think it's just overly emotional right so People the make only reason that I'm okay with this right the only reason I'm okay with Okay. Canceling Pepe Le Pew today in this world is because Disney made the decision and not our government. Mm. Right now, Disney owns the rights to Pepe Le Pew. They are the only person that has the rights to cancel it. And if they chose to cancel it because of whatever intercompany rec regulations that they have or whatever they're trying to do during their process, if they chose to cancel it and say, hey, we're not going to make any more of these for whatever reason... I don't agree with any of their reasons. I believe, my personal opinion is that they depicted Pepe Le Pew as a skunk. The stinkiest animal on the planet chases these girls in an unwanting way. I think the art is very self-explanatory, <laughs> and I don't understand why it had to be canceled, right? It shows a skunk chasing a girl in an unwanted way, and nobody wants to be a skunk. So... I don't think that it depicts rape culture at all. I think it says that if you do these things, you are a skunk, right? And I just think the art is misinterpreted. Well, I definitely think it's misinterpreted. Because, I mean, I guess it, it, the fact of the matter is that he never raped her. He never did. Like, never, <laughs> right? never. So yeah. that but, never happened. I mean, as we were talking prior to the show <laughs> starting, he did forcefully hold her. He harassed her. He definitely harassed her. He harassed her. Hands Absolutely. Down. Hands down. And, and for that, he should be taken to court and sued and get and his money taken away from him. But I don't think he should be canceled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Maybe he didn't know. But in a world of art, I think it's important to show the negatives and the positives. And in a particularly cartoon art, I think it's important because who's watching this shit? It's kids. Right. Right? And, and, I mean, and that's the point of view that they're, they're coming from. Like, kids, kids have a completely different mindset on things than, than adults do. Absolutely. <laughs> right. And, and, and I think the kid knows. I mean, it's... It's obvious. I, I don't the cat think doesn't want lost. that scum. Yes. <laughs> Period. Yes. And, and, and I think if you really go back and her. watch... And I recall... And, and I'm an old guy. And I recall the cartoon. And I remember seeing... And I don't know if this is all of them. But I remember at one point a can of white paint dripped on the back of the cat. Yeah, they tried to make her make her look like a skunk. And it and she looked like a skunk, and that's the first time that Pepe Le Pew sees her. He's like, "This her. is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen and in my like, life." He's like, "Oh my gosh, that's a beautiful skunk. She's yeah. different than all the other skunks." And right. he starts right, and he has an an uncontrollable urge to chase this skunk. So and, I mean, and only later does he find out that she's not a skunk. He doesn't care though. But he doesn't care anymore. Yeah. So I mean, I would say there's. There's also that's some, beautiful. There's some positive. <laughs> that's beautiful. So here's part of my reason with canceling Pepe Le Pew that it just I, I it makes me upset. You. You seen that TV show? You. 
You? No, I haven't. It's on Netflix. Okay. And the entire Y-O-U TV show. Y-O-U or just the letter U? Y-O-U. Okay. And I don't even know the guy's name. All I know is that this guy is <sighs> infatuated with this girl, and he literally captures her and holds her captive. And there's like three or four seasons of this, this nonsense. I, yeah, there's... But people love it. There are tons <laughs> of shows it. about people taking other people captive, and it's art. So this, this differentiation between art and real life and canceling art... I just don't agree with it as, as a whole. That's and, the point of art. And art <laughs> needs to be dark sometimes to show that side of humanity. Because, Agreed. like it or not, humanity has that side. It does. All the time, it's there. That's what makes art... Um, one of the things I think that makes art so amazing is that you can there, there's real life in it. Right. right. So they may exaggerate it like they obviously did in Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> right? Yes. Um, and... Obviously, just like in that, that TV show, you. I mean, well, the cat in the hat just got nailed, right? Like, Mr. Potato Head got nailed. All kinds of stuff. So, <laughs> I just think that people need to lighten up a little bit and appreciate art for what art is. It's not a depiction of life; it's an exaggeration of life. Right. But it's needed because it's a way. Um. Years ago, the Cat in the Hat author, the guy that writes all the Cat in the Hat stuff, Dr. Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss he wrote one, and he was he was doing um, World War II. I think it was World War II. It might have been World War One. I'm not sure. Um, artwork to help people get um, behind the war, and he wrote one that I just this this cartoon skit that I thought was amazing, and it was he was selling ostrich hats, <laughs> and basically if you put an ostrich hat on, you can stick your hand under the sun, your head under the sand, and ignore what's going on in reality. <laughs> so and he so the, the the art was you could buy these ostrich hats and when you put them on you could stick your head in the sand Just and not pay attention it. to whatever else is going on and i kind of feel like that piece of art depicts what's going on in cancel culture canceling something is really just putting your head in the sand and saying that doesn't exist well overly aggressive men exist they happen, right? And this right. artwork helps the world understand that, hey, this exists. And maybe it gives you some coping mechanisms to deal with it. And God forbid, or God pray that, hopefully, that if a girl is experiencing these kinds of things, it gives her the courage to come out and say, hey. I have a problem. I have a problem. This person is chasing me just like Pepe Le Pew is, right? So, I, well, I have, to add on to that. To add on to that, maybe a guy that's overly aggressive can see that that doesn't work. Yes. So, <laughs> I, I mean, the artwork is the artwork. I don't, I don't agree with canceling it. I agree with adding education with it. I agree with adding context to it. Absolutely. Um, but I don't agree with canceling it. And I don't even, I can't even really comprehend what canceling Pepe Le Pew means. <laughs> right? And, and on the, on the, because he exists. He was written. He was created. What did you think about Pepe Le Pew when you were a kid? Honestly, Pepe Le Pew was a character that I didn't really give a shit about. Like <laughs> he was, he was a character in between the Bugs Bunny and the Daffy Duck stuff. I mean, to right? me, and Tom and Jerry. Like he wasn't a character that he was a character that I knew. Obviously, he was a supporting um, cast. He wasn't the main one. I right? definitely didn't relate to Pepe Le Pew in any shape oh, or form. Me neither. I honestly, I just thought he was lame. I was like, yeah. dude, there are so many skunks out there that would love you. Why do you want to talk to a girl that doesn't even want you, dude? Right. So, I, I don't <laughs> like, think... He may depict rape culture, but he definitely does not... He was in love. He definitely appears to be It wasn't like a, a, a hurt or a, a... He wasn't trying to bring her harm. He was like, I love you. I want to be with you forever. But I think the extreme <laughs> side of that is right. stalker. Exactly. Right. Which is what you is, and people love it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I I think the world just needs to be a little less uptight about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and if you're gonna watch those cartoons with your kids, explain it to them. Like, are we canceling Pepe Le Pew because we're too lazy to talk to our kids about this shit? That's what I think. A lot of stuff is happening. People are not taking responsibility for their household themselves and how they are um, portrayed. Right. The energy they put out there, and they want to put someone else in response for it. Right? Yeah. And, th- and that's my problem with Disney doing it. Disney didn't do it because they wanted to. They did it because an uproar came. Right. <laughs> and they were like, oh, shit, this could be bad. Well, but that was because <laughs> they're making a new movie, right? Right. And, and somebody 
in the cast. And that's why I say it's okay. If Disney wants to cancel Peppa the Pew and say, hey, we're I don't not think they wanted be... to. I think they did it as a preventative, me- it was damage control. But we're talking about it. Right? They could have just not cast him. They didn't have to say we're canceling Peppa the Pew. We can just say, hey, we're not going to cast him anymore. Which is crazy because Disney's done some lot of really risque things <laughs> that yes. came out like, over the come past. On. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but it's their character. They own the rights to that character. If they want to cancel them, they can. All day long. And, and I respect that. And I respect it, and I support it at the end of the day. What I would really have an issue with, and this is not happening, I think people think this might be happening, is that the government stepping in here. This is These no, are not, not government decisions. These right. are, at this point at least, thank you. Thank God that we live in this country. The media's becoming, a, they're talking about it. Right. The, right. the media makers have made these decisions. It's not a government decision on Pepper Lee Pew's canceled because it's negative. Correct. Um, I believe that the government, if the government were to censor it, it should be a, a parental advisory, not a straight up, oh, cancel this. But I would say it would probably be better if they did a re-education of Pepper Lee Pew. I think that would be more powerful. Right, and then show that, hey, Peppy, these things are bad. You shouldn't do these things, right? <laughs> they should bring him back and say, listen, Peppy, we're going to fix Peppy. Right. That would we're going to help him. That would be something Actually, I guess different. that's wrong, fix him. He's not broken. <laughs> I mean, he's in love with a cat. He's, he's confused. He just doesn't know how to go about it. Right. right. And I would think in today's world where we're breaking down gender roles and all this other stuff that a cat and a skunk together in love <laughs> would be a glorious thing. Right? <laughs> Oh, Warner Brothers owns Disney, not or Warner Brothers owns, owns Peppy, Peppy, not, not Disney. Disney. I apologize, I was misspoken. Warner Brothers owns Peppy the Pew. Maybe not we should Disney. maybe we should cancel you, man, because you just told a fib. I did. I, I lied. <laughs> I apologize about my lie. Are we getting canceled? Um, <laughs> Are we next? <laughs> really? Warner Brothers owns Peppy. And they own they own stock in all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Like so, but they're making a new movie. I think the story goes, they're making a new movie. Yeah, Space Jam uh, 2. Space Jam 2, Bond Space James. Jam 1. It was awesome. Love Barkley. Um, they, all of them were pretty awesome in there. Yes, um, but they're making a Space Jam 2, and LeBron James said, hey, I don't know if I jive with this Pepe character. I don't think it was LeBron James. No, it wasn't? Um, okay. I mean, on everything I read in this article, it looks like, in just in the talks about, about the, oh, the reopening of uh, Space Jam 2, that some... Um, Basically, a journalist. A journalist in the... Let me try to find it. So they're making the Space Jam 2 movie. A couple people throw up some objections. New York like, Times. The New York Times journalist says, Hey, I don't know about this Pepe character. This is normalizing rape culture. They put it in quotations. It says article. normalizing rape culture. Right. Um, I don't believe... I don't think I agree with that. I think it, it does some other things. <laughs> um, Definitely. I don't believe that it that it normalizes rape culture. Agreed. Um, and even if it did, I think it's if um, normalizing something bad is bad, right? But talking about it is good. You have to talk about. You it. You have to talk about bad things. Everything's li- everything live and dies in communication. Yeah. So if you hide negative things, that's bad. bad. They're very very bad, right? Um, so, but if it's what Warner Brothers didn't want. Good for them. That's that's their call, right? That's their, that's right. their decision. That's so right. they made a business decision, and I don't necessarily care for it, but... We don't have our tech history over here. I'm okay. We don't have our tech history this today. Um, on the side note, though, and we'll just talk about this for a second. Okay. Um, what's the Dune, Dune character's first name? Kara. Kara Dune and Peppa Lee Pew Funko Pops... Went up by maybe twenty. Their value <laughs> like 20 has times. <laughs> has gone up by two hundred percent. Yeah, right. Both characters, their Funko Pop characters, were eight to ten dollars two weeks ago. They're modern, and now. now they're one to two hundred dollars a piece. So crazy. It, it kind of makes you think: Are they really canceling? Is the cancel culture really for canceling stuff? That, that or is it really to sell more merchandise? Because I can tell you right now that the Funko Pop for Peppa the Pew has sold more this week than it has in the past five years. Easy. I would I would I would have to guess. Easy. And they're going from eight dollars a pop 
the two, three hundred dollars. One to two hundred dollars. There was one with Cara Dune that was like four hundred. Four hundred dollars was the asking price. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna get four hundred for a Funko Pop, but they might. They might. Some and then, day, man. People but what we know now is that there is zero expectation for a Cara Dune's character to be made again on Funko. The and there's zero expectation of another Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. So as soon as the, the world starts hearing about that, and they know that this is a limited edition now, that, that it goes down quite a bit. Ron's going to walk in our uh, This Week in Tech History. So we're going to have a little bit of abruption here. But I think we're kind of deep Thank into you. this conversation now. We could talk all show about this. and I we would, could. I would love so to. So I think let's go ahead and get a first question. Yeah, let's go ahead after our first question, yeah. okay? And again, our topic today, we're talking about what mindset do you need to start a business, right? So what are the things you're going to have to tell yourself? Because that internal dialogue is important, uh, especially if you're Pepe Le Pew, because you need to let, you know. If... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My bad, Pepe. <laughs> First question is by Rich. And Rich asks, to start a business from scratch, well, I guess that's what you're doing to start a business. Um, what is the number one thing you should know before you start? And is there... If there isn't one thing, what are the top three things to know? Oh, wow. So I'll, I'll just tell, I'll start this with a story. And I think I knew Brian for about six or seven months. Before we got together? Before the first time he said, hey, I'm quitting my job. I'm going to start my own company. I don't know how long it was, actually. I, know, I saw you in title for a while. Yeah, we, we had known each other. I think we had passed across <laughs> yeah. a couple times. We weren't really friends at that point, but we yeah. knew each other. We knew who each other were. He's like, hey, I'm starting my own business. I was like, good luck, man. Dumbest decision you've ever made in your life. <laughs> kind of teasing, right? Um, and it was a bad decision. But, but it was, I, I, was, I said it kind of wishing him luck and kind of like busting balls all at the same time. Like, hey, dude, it's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. Yeah. Um, it, and it didn't. It didn't necessarily. The first, the first go or the second go didn't necessarily go as well as you would like. But you left on your own terms. You didn't. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wouldn't call it a failure. Um, um, I, I failed at it. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, and I, you know, a part of it, a caveat is, I mean, I also had a concussion <clears throat> and I failed the concussion test for six months. <laughs> right. It's hard to run a business if you can't use your brain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, so what is this single mindset? And I'll go back and I'll tell a story. Um, a friend of mine, an acquaintance at this point, uh, uh, his name's Gabe, and he runs a pretty successful dot com, um, valued in the billions. Sweet business, right? And we were talking one day, and he's had a rough go. And I like Gabe a lot, and you know he lost his wife at an early age. Doesn't have any children. Comes from a big family, but his family's yeah. an entrepreneurial family. And we were talking one day about kids, mm -hmm. right? And this is a guy that has started a company. From scratch, he has a couple hundred employees now. The company's worth, you know, hundreds of millions, if not billions. And it's a St. Louis firm here, and I, I think he's got roughly one to three hundred employees now. Um, nice. And he's like, man, I don't know how you raise these kids. I don't know how you're a father. It's it looks like the toughest job on the planet. It probably is. And I looked at him and said, dude, it's the easiest thing I've ever done. Really? And he's like, really? And he's like, I'm like, I don't have a choice. Like, I don't have a choice on what I'm doing. So I think if you're going to start a business, you should have no other choice but to start that business. It should be so ingrained in you that you know what's right moving forward and how to move forward better than somebody else or anybody else in your life that you don't have a choice. You have to start that business. You have to do it, right? You have to be... 11.35 p.m., you're laying in bed, you should have been asleep 35 minutes ago, and you're thinking about the benefits of the business that you're going to create, right? And, and the problems that it's going to solve and the, and the help that it's going to give the world. And if you have that, then you really don't have a choice on It's almost like a responsibility business. at it's that It's a responsibility. Point. You're, you're going to do it. You're going to do it, and nothing is going to stop you. And I think... The number one thing that you have to say is that I'm going to move forward and nothing is going to stop me. Short of being dead or going to prison, those are the only things that can stop me from starting this business. And I'm going to make it successful, like it. right? So um, I don't know if you want to call it delusion. 
if you yes. want to call it determination, you have, to be, you have to be delusional. Whatever it is, because you're gonna have people the entire time, the entire time telling you that you're an idiot, that you're stupid, that your idea is never gonna work, and they might not actually be saying those things, but that's what you're hearing. That's what they're. That's what you feel that. Right, you <laughs> feel it, you hear it. Or they're like, oh, good luck. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I mean, at least when I say good luck, you're going to... It's the worst decision you've made. I did it playfully. <laughs> um, but it's fucking hard, man. Like, yeah. it's, it's a challenge every single day. Like, you don't have a boss that's going to jump your ass and say, Hey, man, you're, you're starting to pull back a little bit. You need to slack, you're slacking here. You're doing good here. You know, pick it up here a little bit. Maybe you can coast a little on the other side. You don't have that. You have to wake up every single day and get to work. When I was 17 years old, I woke up every mm -hmm. single morning and I went to my desk and I went to the yellow pages and I went to my last line and I called the next number. I said, hey, my name is Ken. I run Diverse Enterprises. Would you like any video needs? Do you have any video needs for your business? And I did that every day for eight hours. It was miserable and I hated it, but I was successful right. at doing it. Right, um, and I did that because the only way I could make videos is if I asked people if I could make videos. videos for them. <laughs> so most of my days were spent asking people, and actually not asking. Most of my days were spent getting yelled at by people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're cold calling. People don't like that. But <laughs> but a bit, occasionally I got a yeah, let's talk, right? And I did some cool shit back then. Like I got to work on the Jolt Cola label. Um, video rent That's rendering awesome. right when i was 17 years old God, i remember amazing. when they, they got rid of um, <laughs> yeah so i mean i i got some great cool projects out of it i got some shitty projects out of it um so it just has to be if you the number one thing that you have to do sounds like whenever you're going to start a business is that you don't have any other choice when you look at everything in front of you and you go man i have to do this i have to move forward with this right um it's my next podcast is a perfect example there. I don't there want to go. do it. I don't want another podcast, but I'm looking at all the variables in my life. I'm like, I have to do this podcast. There's no, I don't have a choice here, man. That's I, deep, dude. I have to do this next podcast that I'm going to do. Yeah. And, and I don't have a choice because the world needs it. Right. And I think that if there's one thing is in you, you have to believe that you don't have a choice here. You have to do it. You have to move forward. I like that. Because there's going to be days. Where you're not going to want to. Sometimes months, sometimes several months where you think there's absolutely no way I'm going to accomplish what I, and I'm, I'm dealing with this right now with one of my businesses, <laughs> right? The city just continually keeps denying my grandfather clauses and they're making me redo stuff. And I'm so upside down on this deal and I have to keep moving or it's not going to get done and I, and I can walk away and lose all my money or I can keep moving forward and muscle through all this bullshit because I know at the end it's going to be worthwhile mm -hmm. and, and I'll get all, hopefully I get all my 401k <laughs> money back. <laughs> I'm like everything, everything I have in it, I'm hoping that I get back. Um, but if I don't, I'm okay with that because I don't have a choice here. I have to move forward for the project that I'm currently working on. And I don't know if that's a, a reason or a goal or I mean, something. That's, that's the number that, one thing. That to me is the number one thing. The number one thing is that you have to believe that you have no other option. I like that. But but success. I like that. I mean when I when I when I did my insurance agency, that's what I that's what I was thinking in mind. Right. I'm like, if I don't help people get these life insurance policies, who the hell is gonna help them? Right. These people are screwed. There's so many yes. people who are so confused about insurance, how to get it, where to go. Well, and I think where you process. come from and where I come from are different a little bit. Like you, and, and I love helping people. It's, it's one of my main objectives in life, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't do businesses for other people. I do them for me. <laughs> like, this is my self-gratification, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not about anybody else. I need everybody else mm -hmm. to, to help the business grow and all that stuff, right? But at the end of the day, it's because I need to do it. It's not because I'm going to help somebody else. Maybe that I help somebody else is one of the reasons why I need to do it. But I need to do it for a bunch of other reasons. You know, see, that's why it's really hard to say the top thing. 
Yeah. Right? I mean, I can think of a top three, right? Like, like number one for me, would a one, not in any order, but one of the things would be mental strength. You have to be mentally strong to go into having a business because, like you said, you're going to have all these people telling you all this negative crap, and they're not going to be supportive. No. Right? You, you, you put on Facebook that you start a new job, you'll get 100 likes, a bunch of shares. Well, I think you need comments. that. So what is the actual question? Um, it is to start a business from scratch. What is the number one thing you should know before you start? If there isn't just one thing, what are the top three? So things? mental strength is something you have to have. You right. will fail without <laughs> it. Right. Right. So yes, that is my number one me- mental strength. Um, the number two, I would be, I would say that know what you like, what you actually want to do for your business. Um, I yes. still run into people that have no idea what the hell their business is, what they're trying to accomplish. They can't even yeah. tell me. I'm like, well, if you can't even tell me what your business is, who, how does your audience know that you're for them? You're talking right. to them. They have no clue. <laughs> what and you and do we here. talk to people that literally have home runs <laughs> sitting at their plate. Like we put up a website with a single product and they start getting orders. And they're like, but I want to do this other product. I'm like, but you have a product right now that will sell. You yeah. want to sell that product? Yes or no? No, I want to sell this other product. I'm like, but this product is selling. Why would you sell C if you have A and A sells every day? Right. Why are you even thinking about C? <laughs> what the hell? Like, right. So that'd be my number two, right? You, you, have, you have to have your mental strength. You have to have the ability to know what your business is even about. Well, and on that, you have to, be a, you have to admit the fact that you might be wrong. You may have to pivot. Right, you you you're probably gonna have to pivot. You're probably gonna have to. That was gonna be my next one. Yeah, at some point. The, the know when, like, okay, you may have to pivot, or know when you have to ask for help <laughs> because you can't do something. Right. Don't lie to your customers. Don't lie to yourself. More importantly, well, you can't do it all. You can't. You can't. You cannot do it all. I mean, if you have, um, if you want to run a one man shop, ditch digging crew, or an electrical <laughs> company, or a plumber, you can absolutely do that. Absolutely, and it's going to be a one-man shop, and you're going to make a good living. But if you want to create a company that has employees and enriches the lives of multiple people, you, gotta you have you have to ask for help. You have to ask for help. You have to scale it, which is it's another thing too. If you are running your business and you are the only employee, you're really not running a business. You are an employee. You're not a business owner. You're O and O, not <laughs> owner operator. Yeah, you're owner operator, right? right? So you're you're really you're really you're operating, yes. right? So if you if you want to be a business owner, that means you have people underneath you that are taking care of the business. You're kind of just kind of helping them, guide them, give them the resources. I think a successful business owner is a business owner that runs a company that has a profit without his personal interaction. Did you just make that definition up? No, <laughs> I was no. looking at like I heard that from a couple coaches in my life. So and I don't know the exact exact phrase, okay. but. Basically, you you own you own a company that operates, and it's profitable without you being involved. Oh, okay. We talked about this before about the difference between an entrepreneur and a business owner. Business owner, yeah. Right, because you have to have like some kind of significant risk. Well, for entrepreneurship, it implies. Well, the definition of an entrepreneur is somebody that has a significant a, risk. a significant financial a, risk. Not even significant. It's it's phrased very oddly in the definition, okay, it and it's a more than usual risk. Right, so the usual risk would be, you know, maybe taking a second mortgage out of your house, um, but putting your entire house up on the chopping block would be a more than un, would be an unusual risk. So, according to Oxford, okay, <laughs> a person who is organized, a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses, taking on greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. Right, so the, he's taking on greater than normal. Financial risk. This is so subjective, man. Right. So <laughs> a second mortgage to me isn't greater than normal because you would do that to put a fucking deck on your house. Right? <laughs> but Putting, to most people, that's just huge, dude. But, I mean, if <laughs> is that greater than normal? No, because people do that to put a pool in their backyard. That's not, that's not greater than normal. That is normal. A second mortgage on your home is normal risk. That it's is not normal. above normal risk. Right, so right. if you're putting your entire house on the line on an SBA loan, then that's above normal risk. Yeah. Right. If you're cashing out your entire 401k to get bathrooms up to APA compliance, <laughs> that's a greater than normal risk. 
Yeah. Right? I, yeah, I, I, I get that. So I, get that. I, I think greater than normal, to me, if, you're, if people do it to put a pool in their backyard, that's normal. If that's the but risk that they take, that's a normal risk. It still comes down to that person, risk. though, right? Because if that person would not do that, it's different, right? I wouldn't take a certain second mortgage on my house for a pool or a deck. Now, I would do it to, I would either, but I would for a business. I would, for, I would do that for a business. I would do that for a... To add value to my house as far as like a, right. a bathroom or a, a master bedroom suite or something like that. Or maybe add on extension. I would do that, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I wouldn't do it for a pool. No. <laughs> I would not do it for no, a But a lot of people would. A lot of people right. would. Right. So I, I just don't think that... I think entrepreneurs are... Entrepreneurship is kind of idolized right now and everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Especially in St. Louis, man. Um, we're a startup, startup. We're a startup town, right? Yeah. And I think... I think a startup founder is way better title than entrepreneur. Absolutely. Right? And serial entrepreneur, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I know that. a couple. Um, I've done it a couple times. I've started, I've started a couple businesses. Yeah, I've started a couple businesses, but I've never, um, only a couple have I taken significant financial risk. Like, I've started True. a lot of businesses, so I don't consider myself an entrepreneur at all. I consider myself a business owner. True. Um, I've not... Um, in no way in shape or form is my home at risk, right? right. Um, I can go get another job. I can go get a job tomorrow and make my mortgage, right? I'm not putting those things at risk. So I don't believe that I have a greater than normal risk involved in the businesses that I own and operate. Okay. So, Rich, you need to take some risk. <laughs> if you're not willing to take that risk. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Don't start your business, man. <laughs> don't and, do and put it. Put it all on the line, right? And failure is okay. Right, and you have to be okay with that, right? And if you're not okay with that, you're still questioning, you're still wondering. Stop, just just stop. If you're wondering, don't do it. Because you're gonna go, you're gonna send yourself into depression. You're gonna lose friendships. You're gonna ruin relationships with your family. You're gonna borrow money from people that you shouldn't have. I mean, it's gonna be a bad, bad yeah. situation. If um, you're doubting, don't go. Don't go. You have to when you go into starting a business. You have to go in like a bulldog that knows he's gonna win the fight, and there can be zero hesitation in your mind because hesitation is going to come from everybody around you. You're going to be told no a hundred times before you get your first client. Yeah. Highly likely that you're going to ask a hundred times before you get your very first client. So um, we do things on a regular basis where we give stuff away for free and we'll ask a hundred thousand people and only a thousand will sign up. Right? So and think about that. Giving free stuff away. <laughs> People don't want to get it. You're trying to sell it. Yeah, so it's 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 hard to sell stuff, right? It's, yeah. It's the reason salespeople make a lot of money, then they're good, is because it's hard. It's it's probably one of the most challenging jobs on the planet. Agreed. Absolutely um, agreed. So and and when you're good at it, you get rewarded very well. When you're bad at it, you don't. You move on. And you live a, a standard a standard life. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, and that goes back to, um, you know, Gary V is a, one of my favorite motivational speakers. But a lot of what he says, I like a lot. And when he says, you know, if more kids ex inspired to be, you know, make seventy five or a hundred thousand dollars a year, the world would probably be a better place. Yeah, and that's if a we, good living. And if we talk to people, talk to kids today, and said, hey, you know. Seventy to one hundred thousand dollars a year—that's a great living. Like you're comfortable, you're happy, and if right. you can have some work-life balance with that, great. Um, if you want to be a business owner, I don't. If you want to, if you want to be a business owner, I think you are a business owner. Like it's just that simple. Like if you yeah. want it, you'll just go do it. And if you're not, then you're not a business owner. And if and if you haven't, then maybe you just haven't yet, right? But. So th think about that, Rich, right? But if you do want to get started, give us a call. <laughs> the number call. one reason why I am a business owner is because I'm a shitty employee. I'm a horrible <laughs> employee. I don't listen to my boss. I do what I want. I drink during the day sometimes. It's, it, I'm just a shitty employee. So I, I made it very clear early age that I either have to be a boss or a hobo. Like those are the two. Uh, 
Those are my two options. And elbows don't pay well. <laughs> elbows, yeah, they don't pay well at all. So um, I definitely would not have a Jeep Gladiator um, that's no. decked out like it is um, if, if I was a hobo. So that, that, those are my two choices in life. And I chose to be a business owner because I'm a shitty employee. Uh, so, Rich, that could be you. I don't know. Right. But but I really hope that all this really kind of sinks home with you and it, it answers some questions that maybe you had um, along with the question that you did ask as well. Um, but if you need more support or you have more questions about that, make sure you hit us up. My text line is 314-216-2040. And uh, your text line, Ken? 314-370-2871. Awesome sauce. Now, we're still rocking and rolling through this episode. Don't forget, if you're listening, to hit subscribe and rate us. Give us those five stars, all right? We might only get two questions in today. We, we might. We might. But, hey, you know, life happens. Yeah. The show must go on. So today, or this week in tech history, sponsored by My Team Fitness. My Team Fitness is everyday fitness for everybody. So if you're looking for a workout that you can do at your home, judgment-free, go to MyTeamFitness.com, uh, type in coupon code Clicks and Bricks, and you'll get a 75% off coupon for a monthly subscription to it, seven-day trial. I mean, if you don't know where to start, this is a great place to start, right? Absolutely. Go check it out. All right, so this week in tech history, we have March 19th, 1986. IBM.com and Sun.com registered. The domains IBM.com and Sun.com come online. These domains considered to be the 11th and 12th oldest dot-coms in domain history. Wow. Did not know that. Sun.com and IBM.com are 11 and 12. 11 and 12. I they don't really, say what 1 through 10 is. I really want to know what the rest of them are. Wow. Uh, and then it says, also, on March 21st of 2006, the first tweet on Twitter was found by Jack Dorsey, Evan Williams, Biz Stone, and Noah Glass. First tweet. What was, do you, does it say what the first tweet was? It does not say what the first tweet was, but the first tweet happened. So both of these topics are very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> uh, the, the first tweet from Jack Dorsey... Uh, Jack Dorsey and um, St. Louis Company, you probably know Jim McKelvey <laughs> founded um, Twitter. Twitter, and they're both WashU students. And I'm a WashU, I, I was a WashU student. <laughs> I did not graduate, but I was a WashU student. So it's St. Louis based. It's very cool. Um, I'm not a big user of Twitter, but mm -hmm. when I realized kind of what Twitter was about, I appreciate it. I just don't live that kind of life. So what. The initial Twitter kind of concept was um, for taxis, mm. right? So if taxi cab drivers in the area, he can say, hey, there's a lot of traffic really quick. And that's why it's really short. Traffic at 7th and Main. That's really cool. Right? And then taxi cabs. So when they were, if you, and I don't know where I heard this from or where I watched it, but if you look at them when they were really thinking about what is Twitter going to be for, they were thinking about an application that taxi cabs could use to communicate easily and quickly to each other in New York City, right? So telling where traffic jams were, telling where um, there's a large group of people needing to be picked up, all those kinds of things. So that makes a lot of sense when you start talking about the restrictions on text length, right? Because right. the text length is kind of arbitrary on how many... Like, it's just a decision that Twitter has made, right? right? It's not, there's no technology reason why <laughs> you can only do 128 characters yeah. other than, I mean, at the time, maybe the database that they were using could only allow 128 characters in each field. I'm not sure why they chose the 128 characters, but if you go back to really quick information about what's happening at a, at a hyper, a hyper local area, Twitter makes a lot of sense. Especially 128 characters. Right. And Hosterian. Fifth, right. right. <laughs> so Hosterian uses Twitter today on a regular basis on Hosterian hyphen update. If you're a client, you can subscribe to Hosterian hyphen update on Twitter. And we give, when in the middle of our maintenance windows, we give out tweets. It said, just setting up my Twitter. That was oh. the first tweet. Just setting up my Twitter. Oh, the first tweet. And that was, who was that? Jack Dorsey. Dorsey. It was I, Jack Dorsey. I see here he's he's. Uh, and can somebody about. look up um, who Jack, where Jack Dorsey's from? Is he from St. Louis or just went to Wash U? So I know that he met McKelvey at Wash U. 
or near Washu at least. Okay, so born Dorsey's raised, born and raised in St. Louis. I know McKelvey really likes blowing glass. And McKe- Jim McKelvey awesome. found found Square later. Square oh, up. yeah. The yeah, Square yeah. readers where right. you can put it on your phone and, and, and run the credit cards. So, man, St. Louis is a cool place. St. Man. Louis, like, we got some big companies, right? <laughs> and, I mean, Twitter was founded by St. Louis folks. Um, Square, Square I mean, is founded cool, by man. Energizer but Batteries, right? Or here in St. Louis. That's awesome. Um, so... A lot of cool stuff. Love Twitter to death. Love that concept. But the 11th and 12th domain names, Sun and IBM, I wonder what the first domain name was registered. Can we find that out really quick? I'm betting it was NetworkSolutions.com, but I'm not sure. Um, Man, I have no idea what that could even be. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I know before the domain names, we had the ARPANET, and WashU was a I big player. I mean, this player. is 86, right? So if 86 had the 11th and 12th, I assume that well, the first one had to be before let eighty six. Well, yeah, but at that time, that time domain names were free. Oh, right? you didn't have to pay. There was a time frame when domain names first came out. Dot com first came out; they were free. I did not know. Right, that. and you could just you could just register them and be, and have a dot com name at no charge for some time. I don't I don't know the time frame there. And then Network Solutions gets involved, and um, I can. Which is the international conglomerate? I don't, I don't know what I can stand for, <laughs> um, but they manage all the names, all the names. Um, Aaron does names and numbers, right? So A R I N is the International Registry of Information of IPs and Numbers. I'm not sure, <laughs> um, international numbers maybe, but um, so we're just now getting the first Symbolics.com. Is the first domain name, and I have to assume that that's a um, has to do something with the old school li- Unix and symbolic links, and linking one thing to another thing because that's what a domain name does. It links a, a name, a, a, a human readable name, to a number, an IP address. So in 1985, I would imagine that Symbolics has something to do with symbolic links. Computer manufacturer. Computer systems company in Cambridge, Massachusetts. All right. They did the first dot com name. And then Network Solutions comes along. And then domain names like a hundred hundred and ninety nine dollars a year was was what it cost to do a domain name, I think, in the early in the late nineties. Um, and then today obviously they're like ten ten, twelve bucks a year is what a domain name costs you today. I mean, some of them are like two bucks a year, dude. <laughs> Depending on the extension, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. so it, for the first year, that's a, that's a scam to get you in the buck. <laughs> right? Renewing it's still the regular price. So um, that's really cool. I think domain names, I feel the same way about domain names as I feel about Bitcoins. I feel like I really just missed the boat I mean, pretty you, majorly. You still have a couple hundred. <laughs> I mean, I still have some Bitcoin, not a lot. Um, and I have a couple hundred domain names and, you know, I've made, I've sold domain names for, you know, I've sold a lot of domain names for 50, 50, a hundred thousand dollars. I've sold a lot of them at that, at that rate. Um, but you know, it costs a lot of money to run a data center. So, (laughs) (laughs) you know, it's not, it's not like we went and partied with that cash. We put it back into air conditioners, generators, (laughs) computers, and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's. That's really awesome. In 1986 was the 10th and 11th domain name purchased IBM and Sun.com. March, fi- <coughs> March 15th, 1985 was Symbolics.com, the first one. 1985. So I was 10. Yeah, I, first, I was one. The first dot .com came out. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like so many people missed so many boats. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's a story in St. Louis. There was a guy that bought the name Posters.com, and he bought it from us at the time. And he was going to open a poster shop, um, and and you can still in Kirkwood drive past. He still got the shop up and set up, and it, all you can see through the window is just posters, but not like posters hanging up, like like rolls rolls of posters yeah. all across the front window. That's awesome. And he bought the name Posters.com, and he was going to open a poster shop in uh, Kirkwood, Kirkwood, Missouri. And he bought the name, and he put the website up, and we built the website with him, and he never opened the shop. Oh, man. Because he sold so many posters online. He's like, why? He's like, why would I ever open a shop? This is crazy. I can't keep up. So his shop ended up being a warehouse for posters, 
And then he sold posters.com later to... I mean, that's probably... I'm not sure who anyway. he sold posters.com to, but he sold the name. And but he still has his little poster shop, and I think he's a distributor, not to whoever purchased it. Beautiful. Um, but there's a little poster shop in Kirkwood, Missouri. That's cool. Um, that was the original posters.com. So don't discredit some of these new extension names as they're coming out, right? Absolutely. The IOs are good. Um when we're running into this world of non-fungible te- uh, to- tokens, I think domain names are the prime example Absolutely. of a non-fungible token. It's a, it's a name on the internet that has value, right? Uh, and all of them have different value, right? We have some really short names that have a lot of value, and we have some really long names that might have some value as well, right. but not as much as a two- or three-letter domain name Crazy in today's world. So, With a .com. Dot com is the holy grail, but there's some dot IOs. Um, if, and if you can make a creative name on the LYs, right? Like the Lees, um, pagely.com, um, stuff like that. Colin Lee. Colin Lee. <laughs> Colin Lee. I can't say it properly. <laughs> um, if your business, if nobody can say your business name, and, and I come from a business called Hosterian, if nobody can <laughs> say your business name, you have a slight hurdle. Yes. That you have to overcome. Yes. But um, at the same time, though, it gives opportunities to, to break it down and, and correct them. Well, it gives you that opportunity. It also reduces your chances of confusing the marketplace. Absolutely. Right? Because we have another project right now that we're definitely struggling with accidentally confusing. Um, we're not going to talk about that in today's episode. Soon. Um, but we'll soon. talk about it soon. we got a new project coming out. Um so it's, I think we got time for one more question. We have time for one more quit. question, um, and I'm it, all this. I'm just so glad that it, this 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 fits the topic today, right? Does it? Okay. <laughs> it, it, it all stays on and like on, on a business, right? Starting a business, the things you got to think about. Right. What do you want your domain name to be? Right. That, that's oh, a big shit. part of it. Yeah. A big part of it. Um, but we will also tackle domain names on another day, <laughs> right? But okay. The next question though is by Hector, uh, and Hector says, "What are some ways to start a company with no capital?" Or is it even possible to achieve? Absolutely. Well, no capital, no. Um, you have to have some capital. But what does that capital mean? Capital can be in a truck. It can be in a cell phone. It can be in a computer. It can be in a roof over your head, right? right? So can you start a business with no capital? I would say yes, but the, the more stuff, the more resources you have, the better. So, But look at your resources, right? So when I was a kid, I didn't have much, but I was able to scrounge up $75 to buy a car. Mm-hmm. And with that car, I went and started delivering pizzas. And with the delivering pizzas, I was able to double that money and I was able to buy a vending machine. I was able to put that vending machine in the business where I was delivering pizzas, right? So what capital are you talking about? Your resources are your capital. And today, you probably have a cell phone. You probably have a roof over your head, right? So you have some capital. Mm-hmm. And with that cell phone and a roof, and if you have a truck, and you could flip couches tomorrow. You could go on Craigslist right now and look for couches, find one for free, and sell it for 50 bucks. Easy peasy. Right? Uh, that, that's totally possible. So depends on what you... If you want to start a rocket ship company tomorrow with no capital, <laughs> the answer is No. It depends on your business. Well, unless you're a genius and you can literally draw all the components and and, and build and the concept. Works, and then sell that idea. And then start <laughs> bringing that to the rocket ship manufacturers, maybe. Um, but I would say you've got a tough go. Um, I would say if you wanted to really dig into that topic, I really love The Undercover Billionaire, where there's two seasons right it's now really that cool. are out. And the first season, I don't remember the guy's name, but he literally starts with, a hundred dollars he's post cancer he's got a hundred dollars cash a cell phone and a truck and he literally starts in a town that he's never been in and he makes a company in 90 days that's worth seven hundred thousand dollars that's awesome. on, on season one right and basically he just hustles and grinds every single day and he's got one objective in his mind make a business worth a million dollars that's the only objective he had in those 90 days nothing else so everything he did was involved around building and growing that business. And if you think you're going to do that Monday through Friday, nine to five, you're a fool. It ain't going to happen. You've got to hustle. You got to put in the work at 9 PM. You got to put in the work at midnight. And when you have an idea at 3 AM, get out of bed and start vetting that process, right? And seeing if it's going to work or not. Do not think for a second, that if you want to be a business owner, that you're going to work a Monday through Friday, nine to five job, 
because it's not the reality. When you're a Facts. business owner Facts. and you want to be a successful business owner, everything you do about is about that business, business yes. right? My kids know if my phone rings at dinner time and it's a data center issue that I'm getting in the car and I'm going to the data center 100% of the time. <laughs> Right. I'm sorry if it's your birthday or if it's a wedding anniversary or any of that those things, right? Because if I don't have the business, no, we don't have right. our lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, it's all gone. Right? So at some point, you have to also have a wife and family that's supportive of you. And if your wife and family aren't supportive of you being a business owner, either get a new family and wife <laughs> or get the business owner out of your blood. And you're right. not going to be that. One of the two. Right. You cannot have an unsupportive family life and run a business. They both they have to they have to be hand in hand. They cannot Facts. be. You cannot have you a wife at home your house that is chirping you at you home. about, yeah, oh, yeah. why did you take this loan, or <laughs> what are you doing, or um, you're gonna fail. Mm -hmm. You have to have a wife and family at home that's like, yes, this is scary. Yes, what do you need? But. We believe in you, and we know you'll make it work. Uh, that, that's what you really need at home. And, Big facts. And it, thank God I have it. Um, I've got it in spades. My wife is phenomenal in that case scenario. She's a risk taker. Um, and God, she married me, so we know that she's a risk taker. <laughs> um, but th those are things you have to have, right? And, Absolutely. And you have to know that your business, if you want your business to succeed, it's like... I mean, it's like a dumb baby. It needs to be like a like a religion that doesn't know man. how to eat yet. You got to believe in it like a religion. Like, I mean, as in like, and I hope this doesn't come off bad towards religions. So take this with you know that context. But you have to have no evidence that it's going to work. Right. But in your head, know that it's going to work. You have to have a delusional bubble <laughs> that it's going to work, right. right? And then, and then once you have that, the first thing that you got to do is start building a team, and because you cannot do it on your own, right? You have right. to have a solid team behind you that is going to, because there's going to be nights not where you had too many beers at the anniversary, right? So <laughs> you're going to have to have somebody that can cover you in those, in those weird situations. Right. And this made me think about something too. So when you're, when you're, when you're starting with no money, you probably also have a lot of time. Maybe. maybe <laughs> right. Um, but, Starting a business, either you're going to need just a little bit of money, but if you don't have a lot of money, you probably have a lot of time. If you have that time, that's what you need to invest into your business to make the money. And just yes. like you kind of mentioned about the undercover billionaire, you have to like, knowing that you don't have a lot of capital, you're going to start, you have to know that, okay, well, I'm going to get this part, and I'm going to upgrade, get some other asset so right. I can do more work, make more money. Right. right? So you yeah, can constantly reinvest the money that you do make so you create your own capital. Right, so I mean, I I know a friend that I I never forget this because I was so I was so jealous. I mean, well, why didn't I do this when I was younger? He started cutting grass, started cutting grass in the neighborhood, and I thought, okay, not a big deal. But then he got a contract with the with the um, the common ground, right. <laughs> so then he got paid to cut the grass that was right next to his house, so he didn't have to go anywhere, and they paid him. And I can't tell you how many times he's like, man, I didn't even cut the grass this week, but I got paid. Right. <laughs> right. But it, it takes th that little bit of creativity what your time can give you to help create opportunities, right? Kind of like what this says up here. Don't wait for your opportunity. Create your opportunity. And yes. that's what the kind of mindset you have to have if you don't have a lot of capital and you're starting a business. Absolutely. I have to. Absolutely have to. Yes. Um, and, and all work is good work. Like, yes. Don't, don't think that you're too good for a job. Just get the job done and, and move on with life. <laughs> Get that on your resume. Use it. Take it as practice. Yeah. I almost wish today we had a couple more hours. I might like to take this topic again because we only got two. Yeah, we got two. We still had three more questions. Yeah, we only got two questions in. So we might want to talk about this next week too. I'm not sure. We'll talk to Nick. Um, but that's it for today. We're, we're at our hour. Yeah. Um, my number, 314-370-2871 is my, self, is my uh, text line. Feel free to hit me up if you have any questions or comments. Email address and all that fun stuff will be up on the screen. Then my text line is 314-216-2040. Things I want you guys to text. Topics, right? Another topic you want us to talk about, put text that to either one of us. Uh, also text 
different types of questions you have, right? Doesn't matter if it's a, a previous show or it's a topic and a question, <laughs> right? Send us both. That all works. And then make sure if you're listening to this podcast, wherever you are listening to it at, please make sure you rate us with all the stars, okay? <laughs> and we will see you guys next time. Awesome. Get to work. And make it count.